no time uh, like the present to talk about labor markets and labor market theory. Earlier yeah. today, of course, uh, unemployment in the UK, 8.1%, the highest in 15 years. The US is at 9%, which for mm. the US relative terms, as you know, is, uh, is quite high. Spain, 18, 20%. Yes. To what extent are you worried about structural problems in the labor force, both in Europe, the UK, and then I'll add on the US? Yes. Well, first we have to realize that the, the basic cause of the high unemployment is, is, of course, the recession. It's the fact that our economies are not coming out of recession at the speed that we thought they might come out when... Uh, um, when we went through the initial big shock uh, of the financial crisis. But um, having said that, though, the way that uh, the economies are, uh, the way that the labor markets are, are responding to this recession in different countries depends very much on their structural problems. And um, there's no doubt that countries like Spain should be very concerned about the structural problems because those structural problems have been in place for about 20 years. They thought they solved them by introducing the uh, fixed term uh, contracts in particular, where a company uh, could hire someone for uh, up to four years without any restrictions. But as it turned out, it was not a good policy because when the next recession came, then the economy uh, reacted in this poor way. Um, I have to say that um, in, in Britain, where I uh, live, of course, and I know more about uh, the labor market, I, I, I don't think the, the problem is a structural I think, uh, one. I think the problem is more one of the um, combination of the recovery in the private sector and what the public sector is doing. Uh, Br Britain has always had a public sector that moved together with the uh, private sector. One reinforce the, the other. The public sector is not that big, but it's important in the labor market. Uh, but what happened in the last um, year and a half since the um, uh, in new government uh, took over was that the private sector is, is sort of trying to take off, but then the public sector gets hit more and more by the uh, cuts of the government. And, and the two are sort of balancing themselves out. And, and um, Six months ago, there was what looked like encouraging news because there was some job creation in the, in the public sector. Then things became worse. The latest figures are discouraging news about the recovery, um, especially in uh, part-time jobs that uh, have played, um, always played a very important role in the British economy. They've been uh, hit very badly. Um, I, I think there is a matter of policy. I, I, I have sort of hinted at this before, but didn't put it so, uh, so explicitly. But I think policy really needs to be more flexible, and, uh, and, and we do need to postpone uh, further cuts until the labor market recovers. So some more. of the austerity measures, from what you're saying, are, are overdone. In other words, the UK economy needs to favor growth more right now versus austerity. I, I think we had... Um, uh, with reference to the cuts, we had too much too quickly in, in Britain. Um, we didn't need to have as much as that, and we certainly didn't need to have them as, uh, as quickly as so soon after the uh, election as we had. Had we waited until uh, the recovery was more robust, then debt would have come out uh, faster, but the labor market and, and growth in the economy as a whole have taken hold much more uh, to the benefit of uh, everyone uh, concerned. Yeah, always a question of timing. To mm. what extent in your research is youth unemployment something that leaders need to really focus on right now? Well, they have to because you, youth unemployment is always the one that, that takes the brunt of uh, any recession. There is nothing we can do about that because the initial reaction of any uh, company to uh, a fall in demand is to stop uh, hiring. And once you stop hiring, the first uh, uh, type of worker who will be uh, affected negatively by that are, are the young workers. Um, now, that's unfortunate in many ways because uh, unemployment that at that time in your career, it leaves a scar on you that uh, it, it takes very long for it to go away in terms of future earnings, your uh, motivation to go in for, for a career. 
um, especially long-term unemployment. So there is, there is a big need, strong need for governments to act quickly, directly in the youth labor market with any measures that uh, might help young workers to uh, cut down on the duration of unemployment, poss possibly extending formal education, not leave, not allow so many uh, school leavers to uh, enter the labor market, um, which would bring a sort of double dividend, as it were, because when recovery comes, then you're going to have a more educated uh, labor force. But uh, look at measures that apply directly to young workers and um, m make them uh, m more likely to, sort of, to take job uh, quickly when recovery comes. Yeah, because uh, as many people point out, when the youth are unemployed, they take to the streets. When older people are unemployed, they sort of collectively sign, complain, and go home and watch the television. But, but the, the demographics actually end up causing social unrest, which we've mm. seen in Greece uh, in particular. What, I on that note, that. do you think that Greece can do to address the unrest? I mean, what can they do, even from a perspective of tone or sentiment, to help people adjust to what we now understand is, is the new normal? Well, well, the Greek problem, of course, is much more serious than, uh, than uh, British or any other pro problem in Europe because uh, the country does need to, uh, to, to cut spending. It, it, it cannot continue spending to the extent that it has because the debt issue has become so serious. It's, it's way, way more serious than any other uh, debt problem in Europe. Um, and unfortunately, the government cannot, it, it cannot do very much at, at this point. It depends so much on its uh, external partners on, within the European Union uh, to help it out. The, the, what can help it most there is if it's a very quick resolution of the Eurozone problem as a whole uh, because it's now been going on for so long, more than a year, and, and they've had so many frequent meetings, uh, German leaders, French, the whole of the European finance uh, ministers, prime ministers, and every time they say, yes, we've made more progress, we're going to resolve the problem. But then next day, again, the problem is still there. So nothing will help is more than a very quick resolution to the problem, which is to a large extent outside their hand, out of their hands now. <laughs> yeah, Larry Summers told us two days ago, you know, having a plan and having a plan to have a plan, aren't, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as taking action, <laughs> right. having a plan and action now. Yes. What, what is the likelihood that Greece defaults? I mean, I, I actually think everyone uh, is almost consensus that it's 100% likely that it defaults. Uh, are you in agreement with that? And then maybe, if you don't mind, sharing your views on what the structure of that default will look like, haircut, etc. No, I'm a, I, no I, I, have to, I have to disagree with that, actually. What's, what's certainly true is that Greece cannot pay its own way out of its current problem. If it were, if it were left alone by its European partners, then it will default. There is no alternative. But it doesn't look like it's going to be left alone by the European partners. So I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic that, that there will be some kind of uh, rescue plan that will not involve a full uh, default. Um, but I don't think the haircut uh, that's been applied so far, the discount on Greek debt, is going to be enough. I don't think it's going to please the European partners to the extent that they will say, OK, you know, we had enough enough haircut now, let's uh, pay up for the rest. I, th I, think, I think there will be more uh, haircut in the final. Yeah, in the secondary solution. market, Greek debt is trading as if there will be about a 60% haircut. 60% mm. is, is on the high side, I think, which uh, is not, it doesn't surprise me because for as long as there is uncertainty, there is also a kind of risk premium attached to it. In fact, the most likely number had you ask me even without knowing uh, what the market premium is currently, I would have said about 50% is, is probably what's likely to, uh, to happen. But just getting back to the, the basic question, in your view, there is a low likelihood that Greece will default, and you're saying because the rest of the Eurozone will come to its, uh, come to its aid? I, I think there's a very low probability that we're going to see Argentina-type default of the 
uh, in 2002 when they had it, uh, because there is determination not to allow that to happen in Europe, there will be serious consequences throughout the, Euro the, the Eurozone. How would you, if you were the professor of the Euro leaders right now, how, what kind of grade would you give them? How well are they managing this crisis? Well, I think so far they're, they're managing well. I'll give them, I'll give them a high grade for, uh, for determination, but I won't give them a high grade for quick action. I think they should have come to a very firm plan and start implementing it uh, by now. But I would certainly not, uh, not have uh, rejected them by now. I would say, carry on, but learn a bit faster. <laughs> Just pick up the pace. Pick, uh, yes. What is the single most important development, if, if the ministers, if the leaders could take action on any one part of solving the crisis? What is it? Is it the expansion of the ESFS? Is it the uh, to something I've heard as high as two trillion dollars is what some people say is actually necessary, yeah. which is five times what the fund is now. I, in terms of mechanics, what needs to be done? Let's just say in a dream world by next week. Well, funnily enough, actually, I I take a slightly um, different view on this and a slightly uh, longer term view. I. I I, I think the most important single thing is, is to come to an agreement about fiscal rules and fiscal policy in the Eurozone. W once you put in place a fiscal rule that they all agree with and they all agree that, that they will follow, it, it couldn't be anything much more sophisticated than the old Maastricht the rules, but it has to be something where, where, there, where, the, where there are incentives for them to follow it. and. Um, and there are sanctions if they don't that uh, all say they agree. Once they put that, then, th then the other things uh, you mentioned, like the fund for the rescue, how quickly they act, uh, to what extent they rescue banks or the uh, Greek government, something, I, I think it will come automatically because they will know that now Greece is a small hole, that once it's plugged, then it's not going to cause any major uh, uh, ripples in, in the rest of the system because we're going to have a framework that is going to uh, control any uh, problem in the future. Last question before we let you go. Are you confident that the Eurozone will be held together and the single currency will be in its current state? Well, I'm confident that, uh, that th they will both be held together and the single currency will be in action. In fact, I have a very big fraction of my savings in the, in the Euro and I intend to keep them there. Thank you. Chris Rue, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations.